Hey everyone, this is Andrew, and today I wanted to do a tutorial on how to get started making a video game in C++ from scratch. I think this is a um, great thing to do because it teaches you a lot about the fundamentals of making a game without being too overwhelmed with everything that a modern game engine might provide for you. And um, I think in general, making a video game is a great way to learn coding because for a lot of people, the reason you were interested in coding is because you like video games and they're all made by coding. So anyways, uh, you'll need a couple tools here to get started. The first thing is you'll need an IDE. So we're going to go with Visual Studio. They have a free community version here. You can just download that. Uh, once the executable is done, it'll fire up probably the installer. While Visual Studio is installing, we can go over to SFML. This is a C++ library that provides nice functions for creating windows and displaying graphics to those windows, as well as some basic audio functionality. Since we downloaded the Visual Studio 2022 community version, we're going to want to download the Visual C++ 17 2022 64-bit SFML. Once that's done downloading, you'll want to extract the files, so we can just go right click on the zip, extract all. Um, we'll just put them in the downloads for now, that's fine. Once you're done unzipping the SFML file, it's good practice to move this into somewhere a little more stable than downloads. So on this left hand side here, I've gone into my C drive, users, Andrew, and then I have this folder called source. This is where I've been storing all of my code projects in. So typically I put the projects in repos um, and then source will just contain some things that uh, various projects in there might use. So we can take our SFML folder, the one that says dash 2.6.1, this is what we just extracted, and drag it into our source folder. Once Visual Studio finishes downloading, you'll want to go to modify, select desktop development with C++ and install it. I already have it downloaded, so I don't have to do that. Once Visual Studio is done downloading everything, we can launch it. From here, we can just click create a new project. We'll go with an empty project and we'll use the console app template. And then when you're configuring your projects, just give it a name. And then additionally, I'm putting this project in our source repos pathway. And then we'll click create. Now that our project has opened up, if we click the play button here at the top, we'll just have a console pop up that says hello world and quits, which is fantastic. This is what we want so far. Uh, but we'd like to use the SFML library that we just downloaded. And so that requires just a little bit of extra setup. If you go up to your solution, you right click, click properties, make sure that we're set to all configurations, click the C, C++ dropdown, go into the general tab. In our additional include directories, this is where we're going to want to point to the include folder from the SFML code that we just moved around. So if you go to your source folder, and you look at the SFML 2.6.1, open that up, right click on include and click copy as path. We can then just paste the path directly in the include directory. I'm going to delete the quotation marks though. Next, we'll go to the linker dropdown in the general section, open back up our SFML. This time we're going to paste in the pathway to the lib folder. So we'll copy this path again, go into the additional library dependencies and paste that. I'm going to get rid of the quotes again. The next thing we'll do is go into input and we'll have to add some additional dependencies here. These dependencies are going to differ between debug and release. So first we'll do the debug ones, click yes to save the properties we've already set inside the additional dependencies here. We'll have to add the SFML window library, the SFML 
graphics lib and the SFML systems lib. In the future, if we wanted to do audio, we'd also have to add the audio lib. It's important to pick the libs that have the dash D after them. These are the debug libs. Then we can go over to release. We'll save these and we'll do the same thing, except we'll add in the libs that do not have the D included. These are the release libs. So we'll add in the window lib, the graphics lib, and the systems lib. And apply that. The final step before we're ready to run the SFML example code is to go into our project's repo, go into the x64 folder, click on the debug file, and we'll have to paste the DLLs in here. So if we go back over to our SFML file, We'll open up the bin, look for the Windows graphics and systems DLLs. Since this is the debug folder, we need to get the DLLs that have the D in them. So I'll click the graphics one, the Windows one, and the systems one. Control C, copy, paste, paste those over here. Additionally, we'll wanna go into our release file. Um, if this file isn't here for you, all you'll need to do is in Visual Studio, in the drop down, click release and run it once, and Visual Studio will automatically create this file for you. Back here in the release one, we'll add the graphics, system, and Windows DLLs that do not have the D in them. Now, if we go back to SFML's webpage, we can copy in this code, or I'll include it in the description. We'll paste this in and go back to our debug configuration. And now when you run the game, you'll get a window in a small green circle. And that's it. Now you're ready to start making a game with C++.